Hello everybody, Jack here with FM Scout and today we're going to show you how to create your own tactic, how to implement your own philosophy, playing philosophy within Football Manager and let's get into it. And welcome everybody to the video. So, so I think with Football Manager tactics, it's been very obvious for a long time. There's not just one way to create tactics and successful tactics for that matter. These are just going to be some tips uh, to try and get you to implement your playing philosophy with Input Manager itself and show you sort of how the game tries to make your, your tactics and your ideas come out and what you might need to consider going forward in the match engine to help get your picture and your ideas out within the match engine. And if you do like what you see in this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the FM Scout channel. Now you're joining us with my own lead save, which is over on my channel, the Cult of Foot Manager, the Cult of FM. We won the Premier League in our first season with Leeds United, which was an incredible season. It was just brilliant to, to go through. And this is the second season, so we're actually sixth in the Premier League going to the end of the season. But we're in the Champions League final and the FA Cup final, which is about to be recorded after this video. So what you're seeing here is a 3-5-2 in Foot Manager. Uh, this is loosely based on a 3-5-2 that I had used in real life with a coaching colleague of mine. And this is how it started. So that each of these tactics is this tactic just as I basically tweaked it and as I went and I explained the reasons why and what I think that people need to look out for when they're creating their own tactic. This is a 3-5-2. Yeah, some of the roles I just had to guess a little bit depending on what I thought was happening in the match engine from the little bit of testing that I did and a little bit that I played beforehand. And this is what I ended up with from a starting point. Now, What's important to remember, if you've done a level two coaching course, you would have gone through your playing philosophy a little bit. And if you've done a UAPB license, you definitely would have gone through your entire playing philosophy. And they break down your playing philosophy in particular into four categories. In possession, out of possession, transition into out, transition out to in. So when you think of it in those terms, you can see how a foot manager obviously works working with professional coaches and professional clubs. They've created the same thing, right? This is your this is your in possession philosophy right here. And this is your transition. This is your transition into out and your transition out to in. And a few other little things here that sort of, I guess, tie in with it nicely into, into the transitional parts of the game. And then out of possession. So you can see how they've they've tried to then, you know, break those four areas of the game down into the tactics created there. So think of it like this is your playing philosophy right here. This is your playing philosophy in all these four corners. And the formation, which people get so hung up on, is something that you should be able to make one or two tweaks here and maybe one or two tweaks here and get the same you know playing philosophy out with just some tweaks and be able to play different shapes different systems of play within the same philosophy right so that's what the generic i think idea is here for from sports interactive to try and get this to come out so with any playing philosophy there's two things you definitely need width and depth sounds very simple very basic but it's how you get it and depending on your playing philosophy and your system it's going to be very important in how we do that so what we had here originally for me in a 3-5-2, the first problem with a 3-5-2 is the width, right? If you're defending for a long period of time, these two are probably going to be back in a back five. Your three are probably sliding across and you're going to be a, probably quite a compact shape and probably slightly deeper than you ideally want to be quite easily. It's, it's one of the problems with the shape is that you can get pinned back quite quickly in a 3-5-2 if you're not careful about how you press and how you deal with certain situations. Um, so when you then win the ball, if you want to be a team that isn't just a counter-attacking team in a 3-5-2, you've got to get width somehow to be able to play out early. So you can ask your wing-backs to make sure they get high and wide early, that's okay. But let's say you win it in your final third here, in your defensive third rather, you need to then be able to play the ball forwards to somebody safely to have them secure possession then build from there, right? So one of the options you could do that, one of the things you could do is you could ask one of your strikers that would be on the ball side. So let's say we win it on the right-hand side here. You can say, right striker, when we've just won it, pull into a wide channel, almost play like a winger of sorts, um, get the ball into you, play from there, and then we can regain the shape later on. Something like that is just, a, just an idea, for example. So knowing the match engine the way that I do, I knew that I'd need to have somebody to be a safe option, otherwise it will just be relentlessly counter-attacking. And even though that would work maybe with leads in the first season, going into future seasons when teams are sitting back against you and you're supposed to be taking the game onto the opposition, it's just not going to work, I don't think, long-term. So I tried to get it here with the advanced forward being staying wide, running from position, trying to get him to do it as much as I can, but that's one of the slight limitations of the match engine. I can't ask him like in real life, you know, real life striker, please go here, when we have the woman defending this deep. And then to balance it out, I wanted another striker that might, you know, hold the ball up a little bit, and because he's a target forward, they might play the ball into his feet a lot more than maybe the other striker, and this player then might try and hold up the ball a little more for us to get out as well. So I've tried to create a, a situation where we're not just relentlessly counter-attacking, right? But this is what we've got anyway. So this is what we ended up with in 3-5-2. Now, so what I saw early on in my first two games, which were both back-to-back -back draws against opposition we should have beaten, 
one of the issues was that depth isn't just about forwards. It's not just about having players to pass to forwards and ahead of you. It's also behind the right. So we'd get the ball wide with our wing back. He'd be up here somewhere. Let's say he's up here with the ball. He's got the ball here. The wide centre back might be something like here in this sort of position here. So the wide centre back might be something like here as everybody else is sort of moving around and whatever the case may be. It might be something like this. Something similar to this. I don't know. It could be something similar to that. The problem that we would have is that then this centre-back will be so far back that quite often this player didn't really acknowledge him as an option to retain and switch the play through. And not only that, but the playmaker on support duty would also be quite high. It wouldn't be an, also an option back. So I expect the deep-lying playmaker here, for example, to maybe like move across and be the pivot option, especially if this centre-back here is too far back, to also then be able to switch the play to the other side. And it wasn't quite happening for us because these centre-backs were, were just too far back. For one, so like one of the overloads you could create having a third centre back is is you know if you've just got three players back here and a team that's trying to dominate the ball, you don't need three players just sat that far in a line behind the ball, right? And because of this issue, what would then happen quite often is the winger would get the ball or the wing back would get the ball high here, and because of a lack of options to retain behind the ball, thinking about depth again, he would just swing in crosses or try to beat the player one v one. Now that is something I want him to do, which is to beat players one v one and commit in the final third. Those of you that watched the series will will understand what I was asking the player to do. But the whole point, I think, of any any type of football, you don't want to be predictable. If you're predictable, it can then be quite easy to, to defend against you, right? So I want our team to be able to have options. I want this player to be able to make decisions on what he wants to do and not be forced, okay, we've given you the ball high and wide with no real retain option, beat the player, or link up with the player, but it has to go forwards because we're not really set up to retain. If we do retain, it's so far back, we just kill the attack. We don't really retain and switch the way that you would want to. So the first issue I, I was able to identify, I think it's important for you to identify, is, is depth. The first thing is depth. Have you got an option back to retain round? Um, and have you got penetration? Are you breaking through the final third? Have you got options to play to players ahead of you? Those are the first two things. And the second is obviously width. Now, I think that in foot manager, you can easily get away with a system like this where you play just one wing back on each side. They're pretty good at, at least right now with the current match engine, these wing backs can easily do the job on their own. Yeah, the first thing is depth. It's not just about what's ahead of you in penetration, it's also about what's behind you. So thinking about that. So with these problems, I then ended up with this as like the second set of tweaks. Um, I switched the wide centre backs to wide centre back attack and completely back attack to try and, try and push the team a bit higher because I felt like we weren't really creating enough chances. We weren't breaking through the back line often enough. We weren't supporting on the striker. So I took the target forward off as well because I didn't think it was really helping. One thing to be aware of is is definitely, you know, userizing the match engine. And what I mean by that is is just going off of what the role says, like descriptions, is very dangerous. Like I've got two advanced forwards there doing pretty much exactly the same thing. But depending on the profile of player you put in here, like if you put a bigger striker in here who's not as quick, he will look to receive it with his back to goal and look to link up as well. It's not just about the fact that um, you've got two players doing exactly the same thing. The profile of player you play is obviously going to make a huge difference. That's definitely something to be to be aware of. So we switched a few things here, tried to get them higher and wider. Now, one issue I had here, so thinking back to the depth problem behind the ball, with wide centre-back attack, they'd now overcommit a bit too high and wide. So the, let's say the wing-back was up here again. We're up here doing something like this. The wide centre-back would be quite high, like maybe something like here. And... When he would get on the ball, let's let's just put something like this. It wasn't exactly like this, but it was. Let's just say, for example, when the ball would then go back, what would look to happen is he would go back, and he would never then look to switch around the back line. So he would really just be an extra option to just create overloads and score, which is great. I mean, that that was great when it happened a few times. It did, but he would always be here. And the problem is, every time you you create an attack like this and you lose the ball, there was just a massive gap. The risk versus the reward just wasn't there. So the risk was much higher. We weren't getting through that much more and we were getting countered a lot more. So it's always thinking about as well that if you are trying to create overloads, you're trying to be attacking, is thinking about defending the counter. Because if you're going to be a good team of foot manager, you're going to dominate games at some point. And what's really important is you have an idea of how you're going to stop the counter. So we talked about depth ahead and behind, talked about width, and then defending the counter. I think, I think personally is the last most important thing. So in this situation, defending the counter was just terrible because we basically have two centre backs. This wing back would be up somewhere here as well. If we lost the ball, it would always be either a striker running into the channels against my two, or they might leave like oh, a couple of wingers up and they would just shred us every time on the counter attack. So basically, if we didn't score, we were going to get counted on, and it was quite bad. So it's definitely something to look at. It's defending the counter, I think, is the last thing I would look at when you're trying to create the tactic. And this did not help us in the end at all. We went to attacking mentality, we changed a few things, but now had the opposite problem where rather than not 
being positive enough, we were now too overcommitted when we were building attacks. And now we needed to find a way to defend the counter better. And before we move on, just as you can see here, there's a few things I did change in the team settings as well. One thing was out of possession, like we were just basically gifting possession to the opposition. We weren't really pressing that well. So I went to maximum settings, basically. You might think, how is your team going to cope with that? But you've got to look at how your team plays. Like when your team sets up in a 3-5-2, they're going to defend quite deep naturally because it's quite a low, it's quite a bottom heavy formation, I think is what they like to call it on the forums. So they're going to naturally defend deeper than you would if you were playing like a 3-4-1-2 a like this. They're going to play um, slightly deeper and they're going to defend deeper. So even though it looks like it's very aggressive, I felt like with the way the match engine was going and the centre-backs just keeping the ball, team like bad teams would just keep the ball off us the entire time. And the only way to sort of combat that was going with this, because doing the maximum settings, these two now I felt like were a lot better at pressing the opposition defenders if there was multiple of them. And they were a lot better at pressing the, the back two and the pivot. They would have all two pivots. I'm not saying you should go to this every time, but this is something that worked for me. And it's something that, okay, maybe in my, in my recreation of what I was doing in real life, it wasn't exactly this, but it's what worked better in the match engine. And that sort of goes into our last point is, is have an idea of what you want. And then you basically got a choice to make. You can either through determination, make sure you get what you want to come out in the match engine, regardless if it could have been more successful or not. Or you can maybe look to it and say, I want this, but this works better in the match engine. Maybe I should adjust to this. So it, that's a judgment call on you. That's completely up to what you believe and what you want to do. And there's no right or wrong answer to that. For me, I decided to tweak it to be better in the match engine um, because I wanted to, to win. So that's just what I did. So the last tweaks that really brought the tactic together, so the first thing I did was why centre-back support actually fixed what I wanted them to do. They were high enough to be a retain option, they weren't too high to get us caught on their counter, and it seemed to be a nice balance of what I was looking for. They don't do everything perfectly like I want them to do, but it was close enough, and they saw it balanced out all the risks and rewards to the point where it was okay. The other issue still was, originally this player was deep line playmaker support, the issue with the support is he was still pushing too high on attacking mentality now as well. I had to consider the mentality that I changed to. He was just too high and he was never really an option to retain back. So what I did is I put him as a deep line playmaker defender, see what would happen. What was interesting is the few times he still got this player here, the wide centre back, got caught, let's say, over committing when he shouldn't have done or wasn't required to. The deep line playmaker defend would almost not just move across with the line, which is what happened. So let's say the ball's over here, wing back's got it, up here, we're over committed got this so let's say this was like the picture here rather than just being here he would like start to move over to the side and then also potentially even drop back if he thought that we were going to lose the ball and i think that's the last thing i wanted to sort of mention is players are quite intelligent in the match engine at the moment anyway they don't just blindly play their role and duty like regardless of what's around them what's around them and the combination of roles and duties is essential it really is and because of i had a wide center back support a deep enough to make a defend now not support he wouldn't recognise when this space was here and he'd start to like retreat a little bit back in. I did have Calvin Phillips, who's a good deep one playmaker, so maybe that helped. Same thing for this striker here. If the ball's played into his feet, quite often he'll take a touch back and play almost like a deep line forward and then look to link up. It wasn't always about just going in behind. So we managed to get what we needed out of the match engine by just closely watching a few things. So to summarise our video here, you have your playing philosophy in all four areas of the game. You then want to pick your, your system, potentially have maybe more than one or variations of it. And think about your depth, what are your options ahead of the ball, what are your options behind the ball to retain. Because I see a lot of people say, oh, crossing simulator. Crossing simulator will happen when there's no option to retain, right? So you, you have to consider that. And I know a lot of people go to like the wonder tactics that win all the time. And they look to then, they almost then shoehorn what they're trying to do into the mold of that. Like, you know, anything can work if you if you are analysing it. But there are certain things that, that do work in the match engine. So that again, that's a bit up to you. But anyway. Yeah, the four areas, your playing philosophy, your system, depth ahead of the ball, depth behind the ball, making sure you have width, but I mean, most tactics will have width. Combination of roles and duties. Are your players doing what you want them to do? Are you looking closely at it? Are you watching it in extended or comprehensive highlights? And I would always recommend that at the start. I know a lot of us like to just watch it in key highlights and just go through the seasons, and I don't think there's a problem with that, but I think at the start, put just put some extra time into the extended and the comprehensive just to see... Are the roles combining and doing what you want them to do? Like, if I'd have gone with Key the whole time, I don't think I would have noticed the deep line playmaker being so such a problem for me, really. So, definitely recommending that. So, once you've, you've got your four areas, you've got your depth, you're happy with that, you've got your width, you're happy with how the roles are combining and everything else. There's only two final things to look at. One is, how are you creating your chances? Are you happy with the type of chances you're creating? Are you trying to get it wide and whip balls across the box? Are you trying to make through balls? You know... 
Are you happy with the type of chances you're creating? And then finally, how are you defending the counter? And I think that if you can get all of those things right, if you can just look at those things step by step and get that as a good starting point, I don't think you're going to have too many problems on Foot Manager because there's loads more we could go into in this video. We could talk about how to set your defensive shape and to combine your defensive shape with your in possession. But I'm just trying to give you some like quick tips of how to, how to look at like a tactic and to show you a successful example of how I went on my journey with this tactic and how we ended up winning the Premier League with Leeds in the first season, playing this from basically game three or four onwards, maybe four. The first two were pretty much tactic one. Then tactic two was like my tweaking phase for a couple of games. And then we ended up with this pretty much the entire season from then on. And it's just something that, that came out organically from just watching, analysing, getting frustrated, and then, you know, trying things outside the box. Like two advanced forwards doing exactly the same thing. Wouldn't be recommended, I don't think, by many people, but it worked for me. And I was analysing closely what I was what was happening, you know. I didn't just blindly do it. And it worked out really well. So, yeah, hopefully this gives you, like, a good starting point. And for those of you that didn't know, like, that's how they've deliberately broken it down. When I know, that's how they like to break down your playing philosophy into those four areas. And that's what they've tried to recreate here. So this is your playing philosophy. This is your system of play. These are the roles and duties, roles and responsibilities, we say, in coaching terms. And that is going to do it. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And um, hopefully this gave you some sort of insight if you were looking for tips on how to create your own tactic with Input Manager. And I think that the best example of this was you're able to see an example of it working. You saw somebody who created an idea, wasn't quite working, tweaked it, and then tweaked it again and got there in the end. And this is what I had. Um, I will put this tactic up for download if people want to see it. And they can maybe see all three and see how the transition of all the tactics happened. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.